Hello, welcome to the Gym RPG Show. Today I want to look at a piece of news that involves both console hardware and PC hardware. So we have manufacturing numbers from TSMC for the fourth quarter of 2020 and that's going to be able to determine just how many units of the PS5 consoles and the Xbox Series X consoles that can be made in this fourth quarter. Now I also want to look at the AMD GPU situation because not a whole lot of people got these AMD GPUs, these RX 6000 cards and they were supposed to be released on the November the 18th and also the AIB partner cards were supposed to be released November 25th but for both launches there didn't seem to be very many cards available at all. So uh, with these numbers uh, maybe we can just do a bit of an estimate on the number of cards that AMD could potentially make. AMD make a lot of products at the moment, so it's not like um, we really can make an accurate estimate, but we can just do a rough estimate anyways. Now, uh, if you like this video, make sure to click the like button and also to subscribe to this channel for more gaming videos like this. So this piece of news comes by way of Nerd Tech. And he writes, news from Taiwan on TSMC 7 nanometer wafer customers. In quarter 4, AMD is set to use 120,000 wafers for console system on chips, 80,000 for PS5 and 40,000 for Series X and Series S. This is around 80% of the 7 nanometer wafers allocated to AMD in the fourth quarter. This console ramp is the main reason for lack of Zen 3 and Big Navi. So this is the table for the products that TSMC is going to manufacture in the fourth quarter of 2020 and you can see here the PlayStation 5 is going to manufacture about 78,000 to 80,000 wafers and the Xbox Series XS is going to manufacture 38,000 to 40,000 wafers. So we already know what the die size is of the PS5 so we can easily work out just how many units of the PS5 is going to be manufactured. So this is a tweet from Rogame and he analyzes a lot of CPU and GPU information. He says that the PS5 APU die size is 308 millimeters squared and that works out to be roughly 13 millimeters by 24 millimeters which is about 312 millimeters squared. I didn't want to get too exact with this because it doesn't really matter that much. So we can take this information and put it into the die yield calculator. This is over at Calitech and you can get a rough estimate of the number of dies that you're going to be able to get from TSMC. So this die yield calculator says for this die size and this number of defect densities, we should be able to get roughly about 125 good dies. Now 125 good dies times 80,000 wafers, that turns out to be exactly 10 million units of PS5. And honestly, I was rather surprised how neatly that worked out. Now in the interest of time, I didn't do it for the Xbox Series X, but I roughly estimated based on the fact that the Series X is about 360 millimeters squared and the Series S is about 200 millimeters squared for the two respective dies. And so I would assume that they would want to make about 3.5 million units of the Series X and about a million units of the Series S. Now if you were watching my previous video and you were wondering whether that report that stated that there were going to be 10 million units of the PS5 being manufactured this year was legitimate. Well, you can see here from these numbers and from the analysis that it's more than likely that there's going to be 10 million units of the PS5. Now let's talk about AMD GPUs and I know a lot of people were pretty upset that there were no cars to be found for both the reference launch and also the AIB partners launch about a week later. Now if you go around to different online retailers you'll see that there's not a whole lot of stock out there and also when you go onto the eBay sold listings and also StockX there's just not a whole lot of sold listings meaning that maybe there aren't actually any cars that are being produced. So I think we should go back to this tweet from Nerd Tech which shows just how many wafers AMD has allocated itself to its own products. And as we can see here AMD has allocated 80% to the consoles and that obviously means 20% equals about 30,000 for its own products. So as you can see AMD has a pretty big lineup of products and it's kind of hard to determine just what the ratio might be between say the number of Ryzen 5000 CPUs versus the Radeon GPUs. We do know that 
the Ryzen 5000 CPUs. They are a smaller die and they charge more for those. So technically they make more profit than the Radeon GPUs. Okay, let's do a conservative estimate of the number of RDNA 2 GPUs that AMD could make in quarter four of 2020. So if we take a look at this die size, which is 536 millimeters squared, that works out to be roughly about 57 good dies if you're using a wafer diameter of 300 millimeters. Um, I've been using the wafer diameter of 300 millimeters because Adore TV has also been using this. So everybody should go and check his channel out because he makes great videos as well. But if we use 57 good dies times 3000 wafers, that gives us around 171,000 GPUs. And actually 171,000 GPUs, that's quite a lot when you think about it. But obviously when you divide it between the number of countries that this actually has to go to, let's say there's about 40 countries that it has to go to, well then that really only works out to be about 4,000 GPUs and that's not a whole lot. It might be enough for a country like Australia but not for a country like America or even China. So just quickly I want to look at some online retailers and just show you just the amount of stock that is out there right now and then we'll come back and just wrap everything up and give you my thoughts on the whole situation. So this is ProShop and they have a status page for each of the new GPUs and I guess that helps them because they get so many questions about these GPUs. And it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of cars that they're getting. So for the power color reference card, they got 25, but that's really it. And this is for the AMD RX 6800 XT. For the RX 6800 cards, again, they got 100 power color reference cards but that really was about it. Now looking on StockX, you'd expect that if these cards were bought by bots and scalpers, they would actually be posting it on StockX and that there would be a lot of sales for these cards. But actually there's only 24 sales of these Radeon RX 6800 XT cards in the last week or so. Again with the RX 6800 cards, there's only 32 sales of these cards, meaning that not a whole lot of bots and scalpers got to these cards. So really there doesn't look like there's a whole lot of stock for the Radeon 6000 series. So just to check the hypothesis, there's not a whole lot of cards out there. I did a search on eBay for the sold listings. So if there were a lot of cards out there, you'd expect that these would be scalped. So I did a search for the RX 6800 XT under sold listings and I got 145 results. And for the RX 6800 non-XT version, I got 189 results. Okay, so I want to wrap things up and give you my thoughts on the whole situation. I don't think there are very many Radeon 6000 cars out there at the moment. If you look through eBay, there's not a whole lot of listings for these cars and it doesn't look like the bots and scalpers have got to them either, meaning that uh, if there were cars available, I think the bots and scalpers would have got them. I think you would have heard a lot of scalpers talking about these cars and uh, talking about how much profit that they were making about these cars, but it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of cars out there. So I think uh, what this shows was that uh, AMD really wanted to rush out a launch because they knew that Nvidia had launched early back in August and they needed to have something out there I guess to kind of stop Nvidia from selling all of their cards and so they decided very early on that they wanted to launch in November, uh, no matter how many cards that they ha actually had. And I think you can tell that from the pricing of these cards because AMD decided to price the 6800 XT at $649. I think there was absolutely no need for them to price it at $649, $50 less than the NVIDIA 3080, given that they were pretty much uh, about the same card anyway and they decided to do that simply because they wanted to tell everyone, hey, come and look over here, um, we've got a card as well. And uh, they did it just to divert your attention long enough so that uh, you would wait for their card, except it looks like there are actually no cards for people to buy. So this is all rather a bit of a weird situation right now. AMD is telling everyone to buy their card, but there's no cards available. And I think, uh, you know, their plan worked if they wanted to stop people from buying the NVIDIA card. Anyways, that's my thoughts on the situation. I think as you can see from the analysis that we did on the numbers of GPUs, that they are actually making cards. It's just that they decided to rush the launch a little bit. And that's probably why that we aren't seeing any cards at the moment at all. 
And I don't think we're going to see some uh, good stock for these cards for a while. Okay, so that's my take on the situation. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And uh, if you like this video, make sure to click the like button and also to subscribe to this channel for more gaming videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one.